This afternoon we were blessed, at least myself and my wife, because they were the first two sessions that we had in this conference. Um, when apostle and prophet were ministering, we were blessed. And I was hearing them talking about very important issues. And I, I, I started to think, we have had so many conferences, the, 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 this type of conference that we have now, um, so many times. And we've got conferences in our own church and many other churches that are holding their own conferences. But then I was thinking, these conferences that we hold and we spend so much time, so much energy and so much, so much of everything to make them successful and so on. What are they doing in our lives? Can somebody say the last one we had was 2019, am I right? Here, 2019. Now, can somebody say in 2019, the Lord said this to me and look at me. 2018, he said this, look at me. 2017, he said this to me, look at me. 2016, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, going back. If not, why do we hold them? If conference don't leave a mark in our lives, as individuals and corporately as a church, what's the problem? Because we're preaching the, the powerful, lively word of God that's able to change our lives and, and change our lifestyles and, 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 and change everything. But is there any change that we can say, 2019, the Lord said this to me as an individual and look what the Lord is doing or has done in my life because of that conference. And 2018 this, 2017 this, 2016 this, etc. Because if it, that's not the issue, then even this one of 2022 will come and pass. Maybe we'll be talking more about this beautiful uh, sanctuary here uh, of, of the work of God that was made possible by the hands of, of his children. Maybe we'll talk more about that. Maybe we'll talk more about the beauty, the excellence of what we see here. And, 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 and this is awesome. And we, maybe we'll talk more about that. But I think the idea of the conference is what the Lord should say and impact our lives. That should be more important. And I've been looking at us preachers as well, that sometimes we are so highly anointed, man, would you just cough and people just fall? You know, without you touching them, so, <laughs> and then people fall out of the anointing. And yet, when we look at the life of this individual, who just raises up his hand and, and many people just fall under the power. But you look at their lifestyle, you look at their, the, 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 the virtue of their life, you just wonder, God, why, why do you use this guy? Some of us are so blessed with so many things by this gracious God. But you, you, you look at our lives you, you, you wonder why are we like that since we are saying, I've been born again, washed by the blood of Jesus 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years. I was born again 50, exactly 50 years ago on the 2nd of December, 1972. Today, it's 20, 2022, it's 50 years. But the thing is, what is visible that shows that I'm born again, that I, I, I'm a new creature? Besides preaching and praying for people and seeing miracles, but what is it that is tangible that other people can see in my life? Look at Paul. He said that he may approve things that are excellent, that he may be sincere and without offense. Paul was looking at the church of Philippi, that guys... I, I, I established this church and I, I've been teaching you and I've been teaching you. But I, I want you to, to develop into a level where you live a sincere life. A life that is recognizable that this one has met Jesus somewhere. Because the Sanhedrin had Joe, Peter and John telling them not to preach about Jesus and everything. But the Bible says when they looked at them, they could see that they were with Jesus. 
And I was wondering, what, what is it that the world sees in me that I, this is a guy that has met Jesus? Besides my, my testimony that I met Jesus uh, on the day of the 2nd of December 1972 when I was a young man and, and I've been working with God the last 50 years. But what is it that is tangible? That is, that's there. Now, as I was meditating about this and I was thinking, Lord, what's up? The Lord showed some, me something that I want to talk about tonight. And I pray that this message will not, you will not only hear it, but you will receive it so that something will happen. You say it was the convention of 2022. This is what the Lord said, and this is what happened to my life. Are you ready for this? Allow me tonight to talk about character. Allow me to talk about character. 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 What is character? Listen to this. If you are writing, you can write this down. Character means a group of qualities. Everybody say qualities. A group of qualities that distinguishes an individual. A group of qualities that an individual has or has developed and these qualities distinguishes this individual to be different from other individuals. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? amen. Character means a group of qualities. Qualities that have, that has worked out and built a particular lifestyle in a particular preacher or a particular pastor, bishop, whatever. The things that this person has developed in their lives, of course, based on the word of God, that have made and built and formed and shaped this individual to be different. Because if I'm not different, I'm just like everybody else, then it means I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm, I, I, I don't deserve to be better and be blessed better than other individuals. I don't know what you're thinking. When I was sitting there and watching all this beauty and all this excellence, I was saying, man, Prophet Jesus is blessed by God. And I'm thinking, but why? Ever since I heard him talk many years ago in this ministry about his dead, he has never changed. All the time when he stands up, he, he has a word, but the word is connected to us and to view his dead in a particular way. And also not only that, not only to talk, but even when it comes to our conference, what comes out much, Bishop, because you're always not there when he preaches, he, it's, it's Bishop. And he will talk so much, and of course in some of the things I already know, he will talk so much about honoring the Father. And even to this afternoon, you heard him talk. His talk is that when you got a father and you honor them, God will bless you. And he doesn't change from that message. So what is character? It's a group of qualities that are found in a particular individual that make this individual different from others. Can I hear an amen? I know about the, I'm not talking about the anointing. I'm not talking about the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking about group of qualities that distinguishes you as a Christian or as a leader. We call those qualities character. I'm going to talk about maybe five or six tonight. The first, the first of those qualities that character is all about it is principles. A man of character and a woman of character, these are people who live under principles. Their lifestyle is shaped by principles. Character, we're talking about those things that do not change. Like numbers, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, up to whatever number. Those are characters. A, B, C, D up to C. Those are, those are characters. Now, 
when we talk about character in individual, in a leader, we're talking about qualities that, 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 that are running the life of this, in this individual. And the first one is that this individual, I see my father do something, I do. He said, by me, by myself, I can never, I don't do anything of my own. Principles. Number two, the second quality of character. It's not only principles, it is a commitment. Somebody say commitment. It's a commitment, listen, to a set of values. A set of values. A commitment to a set of values. As a child of God and as a Christian leader, my values are based on the word of God. To me, what's important, it is what God says. So, when, when I, I, I commit myself to a set of values, I will be different because many people have no set of values. They just live anyhow. But when I'm a man of God and a woman of God and a, a leader in my own right, I live by sets of values. There are things which are valuable to me, like Jesus. He said, what's valuable to me is to hear what my father says. Amen. I said, amen. amen. It is to see what my father wants me to do. Now look at this. There is the, the, the pool of Bethesda there. There are hundreds and hundreds of sick folks. And Jesus is anointed to, to heal anything and anybody. Now he goes there. With my imagination, I see him passing a lot of folks. And he goes to one guy. The Bible said this, that guy had been there for 38 years. And he goes to this man, he says, sir, do you want to be healed? You know the story, the man started to say, well, I have no man and all that. But Jesus said, do you want to be healed? He said, I have no man. And then he explains why he has never been healed. Listen to this. And Jesus with all the power, with all the virtue to heal anything, he heals one guy, one, out of many, and he walks away. And I, I see the, 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 the friends or the, the, those who have been there with this guy of 38 years, looking at Jesus and seeing him that he has performed a miracle, wishing that he could do the same for them. But Jesus turns around and says, go, Tim, let's go. And they walk away. And I'm thinking, what happened? Now I know his father told him to heal one. His father told him to heal one and he healed. He could have healed all of them, but because daddy said one, he did one. That's character. Jesus lived by the values of his father's word. He lived by the values of what his father desired him to do. Even if he had the power to do anything, he didn't use it at random. He waited for daddy to say something. Friends, if you want to be great, you want the Lord to promote us, let's be men of principles. Let's be women of principles. Let's be men and women of God who live by set of fellows. Fellows. Things that I say, I cannot but do this thing. I can only do this one thing. Other people may be doing other things, but I only do this because this is what God has called me to do. This is what God has anointed me to do. This is what God called me into the ministry for. And I'm going to do this one thing. Character. Number three. What is character? Number one, it is principles that one lives by that never change. Number two is a commitment to a set of values which I consider that this is important. I, I know very well this is what the Father wants me to do and that's it. Number three, character means a dedication to a set of standards. It's a dedication to a set of standards. We talked about the set of values now we're talking about the set of standard. A leader must have a standard to live by. 
A leader must not be swayed by, by what others are doing, must not be swayed by, 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 by the popular thing that's happening, even if it's wrong, and join it to feed the other people. But uh, somebody who lives in a particular standard and remain in that particular standard, that man or a woman has got character. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a good amen? amen? Sir, if you just live like everybody, and most people don't live, they, 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 their character is questionable. Yes, they're anointed. Yes, they are called. Yes, they preach. But their character is questionable. Why? Because this guy has no set of values that they live by. This guy doesn't have a particular standard which distinguishes him or her from other people. Standard. What standard do you live by? Prof, this afternoon, Prophet Chisa, this afternoon, he said now, there are people who are putting a lot of disgrace upon the prophetic ministry. And he says, look at what they, what's happening to people who call themselves prophets. They do this, they feed people with rats and grass and oil and, and, and petrol and, and doom. <laughs> I mean, you can tell this guy has no set of values. Because in the Bible, you never see things like that. Even fellows who were not serious like Judas, they never did that. So friends, character means a person who lives at a certain standard. He lives at a certain level. He never goes down. He would rather go up. But most of us are fine now. In a conference like this, we are very wonderful. We are very whatever. But after the conference, we reverse to what we were before we came to the conference. And we just live like anybody. And I'm a leader. The church has honored me. And God has honored me. And the church has honored me. Gave me a position to be a pastor, to be an elder, to be a deacon, to be a chairperson, whatever. And I've got this position. But the question, what? How do you, that position that you have, at what level of standard do you live it? At what level of standard do you, do you practice a sense of leadership that's followable? Because in 1 Peter 5, verse 3, Jesus said to the leadership, be examples to the flock. You, 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 you got the position in the church to be an example. Because a position is not, it's not a decoration. A position is a responsibility. And the responsibility, God says, is to be an example. Paul says, imitate me. He didn't say, hear me. He said, imitate me, for I imitate Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul was saying, I, omit, I imitate Christ. I see the Pharisees. I see the Sadducees. I see the law, the lawyers and everybody else and the scribes. But I choose to imitate Jesus and Jesus alone. And he lived in that standard. He lived at that level. Did you know? That if your standard is too low, no matter what is going to be preached here, you'll never do it. No matter what you will see, you will never do it. When Paul says, imitate me, you know what? We old Christians, we were supposed to be more like Paul. I mean, a man who went through hell, man, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23, he mentions about 20 terrible things that happened in his life. But he's still stuck there. And at the end, he said, guys, I've finished my race. Timothy, look at me. For, uh, uh, um, imitate me. I have finished the race that was put for me to run. And my, my journey went through terrible things that happened to my life. But we never hear Paul complain one time. We never hear Paul angry that, Lord, where were you when I was beaten up? Where were you when I was robbed? Where were you when I was hungry? Where were you when I, was, uh, I had shipwrecks? And he never said not one thing. 
And I hear Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And I hear Paul says, I have finished. To show that he was, come on, let's give the Lord a beginning of praise. To show that he was imitating Christ, he says, I have finished. Now, friends, if you were to be asked and I was to be asked, what are we busy with? Which, when we are done, would say, I finished. What have you finished? What will you have finished? If, if people were to imitate your lifestyle, would they end up in heaven? Gehazi. I mean, he was fortunate to walk with the great, great, great prophet Elisha. He saw miracles, miracles and miracles and the raising of the dead and everything. But Gehazi, <laughs> he wasn't ever touched by anything. You know why? His standard was too low. When Elisha was doing stuff and doing miracles better than his father, to Gehazi, he was wondering, what's up with this guy? Naaman brings money, and he says he doesn't want it. Who doesn't want money? And I walk with him, I work with him, and his salary is so small, and he's allowing dollars to go. And I'm an icon, I will follow. And I think the prophet was sitting there meditating or something. And Gia said, bye. And then he followed Naiman. He said, hey, Naiman, man. Hey, man, you know, I was sent by the prophet, man. He says, when you left, visitors arrived. And, you know, we prophets have no money, but you are carrying money. Can you just give me maybe one bag, you know? The rest you can take. But, but this is a man who is walking with a man of God, but he's never, he's never striving to be like his leader. Why? Standard. The standard is too low. There is drought. And God revealed to Elisha, tomorrow here, there will be food very cheap for everybody to be able to buy. And he announces to the king and everybody, and here is a guy next to the king. He said, that will never happen, prophet. No matter what, it will, that will never happen. We're going to die here. And Elisha said, okay, because you are rejecting what I'm saying, let me tell you something. You will see it happen, but you won't participate. Why did that guy do that? Standard. The standard is too low. When your standard is low... When God speaks, you don't take it. When Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When your standard is too low, you think that's bragging. But Paul was not saying, I can do all things through my education. You know, I'm a highly educated. I've got so many master's degrees and so on. He was not talking about that. When he says, I can do all things through Christ. Read your Bible. He didn't say through Jesus. He said through Christ. Christ there, that word entails and means and brings an understanding that I can do all things through the anointing. Because Christ is the anointed one. So through the anointing of the anointed one, when the anointing is upon me, I can do all things. Friends, if you are not bothered about your standard, you will achieve very little and do very little and maybe say, I've finished. When you haven't finished, nothing. And unless you pull up your socks and start to realize that, by the way, every day when it passes by, your days of being on earth are getting less and less. Even if you're not sick, even if you feel strong and everything, and, you know, your days are getting fewer and fewer. But the thing is, as you're getting closer to your day of departure, what are you finishing? What are you doing? I'm not talking about preaching on Sunday. Everybody can do that. 
I'm talking about living right and being a good example to the flock. Because we are leaders, most of us here. Being an example. What type of an example am I? When I stand behind the pulpit, what do the church see? Do they see a guy or do they see a man or a woman of God? Do they see somebody who they would say, if I live like that, I will also end up in heaven? Or they say, well, by grace, maybe, yeah. You know? And the moment you do that as a leader, you discourage people. You discourage the flock, man. Then they say, well, the, the leader and, and, and we, the, the followers, we are the same. Please, leaders, you are not supposed to be the same with the flock, man. Because God wouldn't say be an example to the flock if you are exactly like the flock. I mean, sheep must smell like sheep. And you're not a sheep, you're a shepherd. You must smell like a shepherd. The smell of the sheep must not come on you. It is the, the smell of the shepherd that must go to the sheep. But it takes standard. At what level of life are you living your life? As a wife in the house? As a husband in the marriage? As a father? What standard are you living at? If life was to be reversed, say, I'm talking to you, the man. If life was you reversed, and your, your life and the life of your wife reverses to youth, would your wife, when you say, hey, say, say, Simon, can, would she say, yeah, 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 or she would say, what? And disappear. Would your wife accept you again? Or would she say, God have mercy? Hey, not this one. You said you hate divorce. I would have divorced him because, boy, he's very good at the pulpit, but at home, he's something else. Mama. Because naturally, I think it is him who started. Him, I'm talking about your husband. If life was to reverse, and he comes, would you accept him again? If you're a man, would you accept your wife again? Because you live a life of principles. There are things you do and things you don't do. There are things you participate in and things you don't participate in. Never mind others are doing because you are not others. You do your own thing. You live by principles. You got certain values that you live by. You observe those values and you cherish them. And you want to live those values. And your standard is set. I live at this level and that's it. I'll never go down there. If people below me say they're enjoying it, let them do it, but I live here. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yeah. So to develop character, I must, have, I must have a certain standard I live at. There must be certain things I don't do. There must be certain places I don't go. There, are, there must be certain people I don't associate with. I love them, but I don't associate with them. Because I live at a certain standard, and that standard does not accept things like that. I love people. I love those who don't even love me. But it doesn't mean I must be their friends because I love them. Their standard is not like mine. Now, you know when I'm up here, and you are down there, and we start pulling at each other. Would it be easier for me to pull the girl from the bottom to the top? Or will it be the guy at the bottom to pull me down? Which one will be easier? Which one will be easier? The one at the bottom will be 
able to pull me down, not because they're strong, but because uh, of the force of gravity. That's helping them. So when I, 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 I don't even stand, Ed, anybody can pull me to their level. Anybody can, can, can get me uh, involved in their lifestyle and their things because I don't even stand that. When I see somebody having big crowds because they are doing funny stuff, if you don't have a level of standard, you will also want to say, hey, what are you, oh, you're, so you're, you're selling this or you're giving this or you're doing that and then you, you also start doing it because you have no standard. During the COVID situation that you know ravaged the whole world, some people lost their faith in God. They would say, if there's a God, why, why is this all happening? If there's a God, why this? If there's a God, why did, why did my wife die? Why did my husband die? Why did my mother die? But you see, when you've got a, you live at a certain standard, you are not moved by what's happening around. You are moved by what God says. You may say, well, I don't understand what's going on, but it doesn't move me. A set of standard a set of values number four character means an, a self imposed discipline a, a self imposed discipline when you got character, you, you, you impose a particular level and you impose this level upon yourself. Watch this. What, what do you mean by that preacher? This is what I mean. That means you you got you 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 lock yourself you lock yourself in a particular cell of your own you get inside the cell and you are inside the cell the whole body of course now inside the cell you close the door of the cell that you impose upon yourself and after closing you lock the door purposely and after knocking then listen to this you throw the key outside so that you say i'm not gonna come out of this until jesus comes or until i die character means you put yourself in a particular level of life and it's a self-imposed jail where you lock yourself and throw the key away to make sure that you won't be able to open no matter how hot it becomes in here no matter how embarrassing it may become no matter how many people will laugh at you you will say laugh but i'm not coming out of this can i hear good amen now some of us we are so free that we 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 just live anyhow but when you are in jail and it's locked and you have no key you remain there we're talking about people who no matter how bad their situation becomes they never change they stick to one thing if it's a young lady she says age may be growing I may be becoming 30 something and I, I, nobody's talking marriage about me but it doesn't mean I'm gonna sell myself it only means I will wait until my chance comes oh, come on let me hear good amen when you are that type of a young lady lady you are Rebecca like you are Rebecca like what we just heard lately 
You are rebel you, you stay there and say, marriage or no marriage, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to wait. If he brings somebody, so be it. If he doesn't, I'm not going to sell myself. I'm not going to lower my standard and go sell myself in the city. Got many people, young people, young ladies who are crying inside marriage because they got into a wrong one because they were influenced by people who were saying, when are you getting married? Uh, when is he marrying you? As if they know you got somebody. And even, even inside the church, there are people who will talk about, to you about marriage and questioning you, why are you not married? And if they are relatives, they will even go and consult which doctors. To find out what's wrong with you. And yet there is nothing wrong. Ladies, I mean arithmetically speaking or mathematically speaking, women are in the majority all over the world. If the country is normal, women are more than men. So if women are more than men and men have got support, they're supposed to take one one, it means there will be others who won't have. And it's not seen. Ladies, God is single. Jesus was also single. And he never complained. You don't value the value of single wood because you don't know. That single wood is very much godlike. I mean, God could have created himself the most beautiful thing ever and said, This is my wife. But he didn't. And Jesus said something someday. He said, Guys, he was talking about this, what the, the Pharisees believe that after death there's no life and all that and all. So they said, Jesus, there was a lady. She was married in a particular family. And according to that tradition, uh, if it, the first, the, the eldest brother dies without having children with wife, it's automatic for the wife to be transferred to the one who follows the one who has died. <laughs> Jesus, there were seven. Okay, let me put it the, the, your way. They were seven. So, when they were seven, When, when, when the resurrection takes place, whose wife is she going to be, Jesus? And they thought they've cornered Jesus. And Jesus said, you see, you err because you don't, know, you don't know the scriptures. In heaven, there's no marriage. So you who are single, you are already in heaven. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain what I mean. Let me explain what I mean. We that are married, when we get to heaven, I think we will need the grace of the Holy Ghost to help us to live a single life which we are not used to. And you guys will already be, you will be experts in being alone and when we are complaining, you will say, shut up. We were single on earth. It is the same here. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. We're talking about locking yourself in a particular level of life where principles are like this, values are like this, the standard is like this, and therefore, this is now where I lock myself because that's what my daddy in heaven wants. That's exactly what Jesus did. He was also single and he walked with his guys and there were a lot of women in the ministry of Jesus. You don't believe me? Read Luke chapter 8. It will tell you that Jesus had a lot of, of ladies who worked with him and even supported him financially. But Jesus... Read 1 Peter 2.21, it will tell you that Jesus never sinned. Not even once. He did not sin and then repent. He was sinless. And that sinlessness 
dependent on the principles he lived by, on the standard he lived by, on the values he lived by, on the iso self-isolated situation of saying, I'm not going to do that because people do it. I'm going to do what my daddy says. Can I hear good amen in the house? What is character? Character is locking yourself in a particular lifestyle and refuse to change no matter who criticizes it, no matter who says what. Amen? Number five. Character. It's a constant effort to integrate, listen, your words, your deeds, and actions into one. Character is a constant effort to integrate what you say or what you preach and your deeds, actions into one. In other words, you, you don't only say things, you actually live things. Hello? When we say you're a man of character, a woman of character, your words and you are one. When you say something, you are it yourself. When you say, you, you are preaching, you say, the Bible said, thou shalt not lie, because liars are going to the lake of fire and all that. We listen to you talk every time, everywhere. When you are angry or too happy, we still find that you don't lie. That's character. What you preach, you actually live it. When you talk giving, you are a giver yourself. Hello? Whatever you preach, when we look at you, we see you. That means your words and you are one. Not to preach something here and after church you are something different. That's not character. Character it means whenever, whatever you preach, you yourself are it. Amen. Amen. I'm about to finish. And I hope you're picking up something for yourself. Constant effort that what I preach as a preacher I must live it. Because the Bible says I'm supposed to be an example to the flock. So when I preach about something, I live that. If I preach about holiness, I live a holy life. If I preach about you men love your wife as Christ loved the church, I, I demonstrate by loving my wife. When the Bible says, ladies, come on, submit to your husband, you know, as the church submit to Jesus. When you are preaching as a woman, you preach that. When people look at you, they must see a submissive wife to her husband. That's character. Amen. When, when I talk about being, being, living a morally upright life, let the people look at me and see a morally upright person. Hey, someday Samuel, Samuel blessed my heart, man. He called the nation of Israel, I believe, to a stadium or something, or an open place, and he said, guys, I've been your high priest, I've been your prophet, I've been your judge. When you look at my life, is there anybody here who can point out anything that contradicts my three positions that I did to you? The whole nation said, no, not one thing. So Samuel of the Old Testament was able to live and lead people and even challenge them and say, do you know something wrong that I've done as I led you? The nation said, no, no. Not one. No, I, I, I sometimes think, can I call the people in my area who know me and say, is there anybody here who knows anything wrong that I've done? Some of you, can you ask your church and say, church, I'm your pastor. Do you know anything, do you know anything wrong that I've said, that I've done? Or would you say, now listen, you listen to what I say because I'm flesh and blood. Don't look at me like I'm an angel. I'm also human. You must only listen to my word. Hallelujah. You know, 
know when you're a man or a woman of character, you live what you preach. You are followable. And that's a standard that the devil hates with passion. What the devil wants is that we must mix issues and then we blame our flesh and blame that we've got flesh and blood. What do you want? Do you want wood and water? Because God expects you to, to have character with flesh and blood. Because Jesus is our perfect example. He was uh, the man of God. He was preaching in the afternoon. He said, we were, we, were, we were predestined to be like Jesus. Some of us say, huh? We were predestined so that when we come to the kingdom of light, we must be like Jesus. Pastor, but I'm not Jesus. Exactly. You are not Jesus, but you are, you are a son of God. The Bible says they that received him were given the power to become sons of God. And Jesus is the son of God, is your elder brother. And he's got, he, has, he has been an example. He never sinned, not even one time, for 33 and a half years. Now Samuel of old challenged the nation and said, have I done anything? Have I bribed anybody? Have I taken anything from anybody, you know, illegal and so on? They said, no. You know, I was challenged by that. I was challenged that can people listening to me preach, watching me live my life, do they see the same person or they see two people, three people, four people? Something else on the pulpit? something else at home to my wife and children, something different in the community, something different at work where I, I, I've got a job. People see so many people in me. Character would say what she says and what he says is one. Can I hear good amen? And if we don't strive to that level, this flourishing stuff, which we see over there, that they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Even at old age, they will still be bearing fruit. We shall never see it. To be planted in the house of the Lord doesn't mean to be backslidden inside the church. And be a backslider in the church. And I, I got other backsliders and we sit there as a group. All we do is to criticize everything and everybody. Yeah, this building, yeah, people say it's beautiful, but they should have done this. The, the stage was not supposed to be here because the people at the back... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the dome shape man, it's, man, no man, it was supposed to be. Hey, I, the worship team, I know the, you know the, and you tear people all standard. Instead of seeing value in people, you see what to criticize. The pastor's wife, hey, you know that woman, <coughs> you know that woman, <laughs> hey, you know, Bishop, it's all right, but hey, man, Apostle, man, hey, man. Hey, hey, my daughter. What's wrong with you? Why don't you see good in people? Don't you know that it is said every cloud has got a silver lining? Don't you know there is something good about everybody? There is something good that if you want to see. If some people who know me, and it's late, about 10-ish or 11-ish, I am at the bar, and I tell them I'm looking for water, will they believe me? So I went there, and I looked around, and I looked around. I went there, I said, hey guys, do you have water here? They said, yeah. I said, can you give me two bottles quickly, please? Now, as they went to fetch the bottles, I'm looking around and see those bottles there. Some are green, some are blue, some have got figures, some are lean, some are, you know? 
And uh, it, the, I was waiting for the guy to come with the water. And then I, I said, hey, how much is that one? They said, 1,000 rand. That one, 3,000. I said, give me my water quickly, please. <laughs> I took my water and I walked away. Because I'm thinking, if some people find me still asking for prices. <laughs> then they will say, oh, that's why. Uh, we were wondering, was, oh, so it takes some stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as children of God and as leaders, there are certain things we don't do. There are certain things we don't say. There are certain places we don't go. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Character. <sighs> Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2, it is in German, Job is sick. He's got boils everywhere. He is in terrible pain. He's out of his bedroom. He lives about the ash heap there. And he's scraping himself because these boils are itching and they're painful. And Mama Job came. Chapter 2. Verse 9, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die, man. But he said to her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. I'm not saying you're a fool, but you're speaking like one. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, watch this. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Look at the standard where Job lived at. His wife was way down below there. I mean he has got boils under the feet and he has got boils everywhere. Even here where he sits by and uh, everywhere, I think even here, in the eyes and in the head, he's got boils everywhere. Instead of his wife coming to pray with him and sympathize, she says something. Are you still holding on on your integrity? Number one, she knew her husband was a man of integrity. I say she knew her husband was a man of integrity. She says, are you still holding on, on your, in this lifestyle of yours of integrity? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, integrity is another word of character. Hello? Integrity is another word of character. Are you still living at the level of your character? We know you don't do this, you don't say that, you don't participate in that. Are you holding on that sick like this? Curse God, I suggest. And then you die. Comma, and then go to hell. She didn't say that, but that's what she actually meant. Curse God and die and go to hell. But Job said, Mom, you know what you're saying? It's foolish, foolish women who say that to their husbands. What do you mean I must curse God? Instead of saying, darling, please hold on until you die. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. And so on. No, curse God and die. But Job refused to be influenced. And I've come to say to you, refuse to be influenced. Refuse to be influenced by your wife, by your husband, by your colleagues, and by anybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. you got to refuse yourself. God is not going to refuse for you. Job refused. And said, mama, you speak like one of the foolish women. I'm not going to do that. Now, obviously, Job didn't understand. He thought all the, the, the things he was going through, they were from God. But you and I know that they were from the devil. But Job, 
even if I was mistaken in understanding where the situation, why those things were happening, at least he said, no, I cannot, I, I got to accept this and remain who I am, keep my integrity. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Integrity is another word of character. The last scripture, ladies and gentlemen, Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Are you learning something? I say, are you learning something tonight? Psalm 25, 21. The Bible said, let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. David says, let integrity and uprightness, which is still integrity, which is still character, preserve me. Because I am waiting on thee, O oh God. Job, what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for God to take me out of this. I'm waiting for God to remove me from this situation. I'm waiting for God to change the circumstances. I'm waiting for God and in the, pro in the process of waiting, I'm not going to change my character. I'm waiting being who I am. I'm waiting in jail. I mean, I am, I, I've got a self-made jail and I cannot come out of this because this is who I am. A man of integrity, a woman of integrity. Amen. Who have been made the righteousness of God because Jesus, the Bible says in Isaiah, he's the righteous servant of God. So when you receive this righteous servant of God, he finds you unrighteous and he transfers his righteousness into you and Paul says you become the righteousness of God. So because I am the righteousness of God, I, I stick to my righteousness by living it and speaking it. Because I want to be preserved. And one day when I check out of my body, anyhow, anywhere, when I step out, Luke chapter 15 talks about when, when Lazarus came out of his body, the Bible says he found angels waiting to accompany him to the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. When Lazarus came out of that body, broken, rotten body. When he stepped out, he found angels smiling, say, hey, well done, brother. You made it. Come on, brother. I see maybe there were two or three, one holding by the right, one holding by the left, one, one at the back. They were all smiling and he didn't, feel, he didn't feel afraid. Where am I? Who are these guys? No, he could feel this is where I was coming to. And the Bible said they took him into the presence of God, which it calls the bosom of Abraham. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I, one day we shall die. I will preach my last message and I will never know I'll never preach again. You will attend a service and you will never know you have attended the last service of your life. And whatever is being preached there, if it is challenging you but you do nothing about it, you may never have another chance of being challenged by the preacher. You may have a lot of chan chances of going to places where you are motivated and you are encouraged and you are motivated and, that, and it ends there. I'm talking about character tonight. And I'm talking to myself more than I'm talking to you. And at TS, you better live what you preach. You better live what the word of God says. Preaching the word of God in many places, making altar calls, hundreds and thousands of people have given their heart to Jesus. In the States, in Britain and other places, we've been there preaching and making altar and people give, giving their lives to Jesus. But Paul says, listen guys, when you see me living my life, what I've done is this, I've bound my flesh. So that after preaching to others, I myself may be disqualified. Whether you say amen or not to that one, that's it. We're not going to heaven by preaching.
Paul says, I bind my flesh. In other words, I lock myself in a self-made cell and refuse to come out. No matter what my flesh says, I say, no, it says, but do it for the last time. I said, flesh, the last time I did was the last time. I'm not going to do that. But others are doing it exactly, but I'm not others. Aren't you bored living life like that? No, I'm not bored because I'm living what the word of God expects me to live. And it's not boring. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about character. 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 I close. Character is not a gift. It is something you must develop. You don't say, I don't have the gift of character. Character is not a gift. It is something you must develop. When Job refused to be influenced by his wife, it was not a gift. It's a decision said, woman, I'm not going to do that. Don't sit there and say, well, there are different gifts of the Holy Ghost. That one I don't have. It's not a gift. It is something you must develop before you die. So that when you talk about Jesus and say, come to Jesus, he will make you a new creature. Look at me. I was like that, I was like that, but look at what the Lord has done. The world must say, wow, we want that. But if I'm like the world, when I talk about Jesus, nobody will, will believe me. Nobody will believe that Jesus can change your life. Nobody will believe that Jesus can give you the power to become a son of God. They will never believe it. Because they will say, he should start with you. Amen. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. With all our eyes closed, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wednesday night. You are hearing a message that can never make you clap your hands and shout and give. Because this is to stabilize you. This is something I must cry unto God and say, Lord, help me. The Bible says, they that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, they shall be fed. It's your life, night. We would rather not run to sleep, but to sit and look and take stock of our lives. I pray, God, that you help us in this regard. Let's all pray. Everybody pray. I'm giving you one minute. Let's all pray. Pray your own prayer. Come on. Pray, everybody. Pray, pray, pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God about what he talked to you about. If you're going to repent, please do.